positive numbers are large and negative numbers are small comparatively. So in that, negative 10 would be bigger than positive, or would be smaller than positive 5, right? Because negative 10 is 10 below 0, positive 5 is 5 above 0, so you would have more above compared to less below. But that's not how it works in physics. In physics, positive and negative numbers are direction. What that means is that a positive number is forward and a negative number is backwards. So if I start off going left, that would be my positive direction. And if I turn around and go right, then that would be my negative direction. Okay? So positive is just going forward and negative is just going backwards. Now, here's where this gets kind of weird. That means, in physics, negative 10 is bigger than 5. Negative 10 is bigger than positive 5. Again, I know that's weird, because that's not what you're used to. You guys are used to math, where negative numbers are small. But that's not the case in physics. In physics, negative numbers just mean opposite direction. That's all they mean. They don't mean big, they don't mean small, they're just numbers. Um, and so you have to be careful with that um, as we're going. So just make sure you are uh, being careful with that for these questions. Okay. So what is magnitude? Magnitude is just the number value. So when we're talking about physics here, we're talking about just the number. So all we're talking about is the value, okay? Negative 10, we're just worried about the 10. Positive 5, we're just worried about the 5. So we're not worried about any direction, we're just worried about what the numbers are. That's it, okay? So that's what I mean by magnitude. Um, the direction would be the negative sign or a positive sign if there is one. Um, but really, when we're talking about direction, we're just talking about negatives because the positive is implied. All right, difference between scalars and vectors. Um, we need a way to identify which numbers have directions and which don't. Um, so, for example, uh, scalars are magnitude only, they're just numbers. So some examples of those. Someone give me something that you think is magnitude only. It does not have direction. Yeah, go ahead. Huh? Well, that's a number about zero is weird because zero does and doesn't have direction. Um, it does. Zero is an interesting one. I like that answer, but it's not. Um, think of like a unit or a measurement. What's something that you could measure, or what's a value for something um, that would just not have a direction? You can't, like, go in this way. What's something we can measure about an object that would not have a direction to it? Jamal, what do you think? What's something that wouldn't have a direction? Think about you. What's something we can measure about you that doesn't have a direction? Think about standing on a scale. Yes. So your weight or your mass, there's no direction to that, right? It's just a number. That's it. Another good one is time. 
you can't have backwards time. You can't go backwards in time. So there's no direction to time. Um, speed. Speed's an interesting one. Um, if you look at the speedometer in your car, it just tells you how fast you're going. That's it. Doesn't tell you anything else just tells you how fast you're going. So that would be a scalar value. It's just the magnitude. It's nothing else. Okay? Vectors, if you've ever seen Despicable Me, you'll know that Gru's name is Vector as a villain, and it's because he does acts of magnitude and direction. It's been a hot minute since the Despicable Me movies came out, but I don't know how you guys, old you guys would have been then. Maybe like five. Okay, so examples of these, magnitude and direction. Vectors. A good one for this is force. So force is what you apply to an object to change its motion. Um, you always have to do that in a direction. You can't just push on something. You push it to the right, or you pull it to the left, or you lift it up. There's always a direction to it. It's never just a number. Okay. Um, another good example of this is velocity. Now, you may have heard of velocity, or you may not. Velocity is like speed. It's how fast you go. But the difference is velocity tells you the direction you're going to. So you could have a negative velocity or you can have a velocity north or south. Um, but you can't have a distance that's that. If you have a dis or a speed, if you have a speed going north, it's velocity. It's not speed. Um, if you have a compass in your car or if you have a GPS that's telling you how fast you're going and the direction you're going, it's telling you velocity. Not telling you speed. Okay, so velocity has vectors, um, speed does not. Okay, and last one, standard units. So these are the MKS units. Uh, when we're measuring length, we're going to use meters. When we're using time, we're going to use seconds. And when we're measuring mass, which we're not going to do for a while, we're going to use kilograms. you guys to try number six and seven, or sorry, just six. Uh, by the way, does anyone have questions on one through five? Alright, let's try six. Um, I gave you two scenarios. A, you go right five meters and then you go right two meters more. And B, where you went right five meters and then turned around and went two meters back. I want to know how far you went. All you gotta do is write a number down. Take your best guess. How far do you think they went? For each of these, for A and B, how far did they go? ideas. Any takers on uh, number or letter A? 
How far did they go? Yeah, go ahead, Jacob. Seven meters. Anyone going with different different answer? Going once, going twice, going thrice. Sold. It is seven. Okay, we go forward five and then forward two more. We go seven. Okay, what about for B? What do we got for B? What did you say? Seven. You like seven? Okay. Anyone go with anything different? What you get? Three. Okay, why well, you got three for me, Cole? Okay. So, and you just added them up, right, Gabe? So you were thinking 5 plus 2 is 7, and you were thinking 5 minus 2, because you were thinking about this section here, basically. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, uh, takers for 7. Just raise your hand. I'm just interested. Takers for 7. Okay. Takers for 3. Okay. About half and half. The correct answer is, except, see, it's actually 3. The correct answer is, both. They're both right. The reason is they're each measuring a different thing. Distance is measuring how far you go, and displacement is measuring how far you go from start to finish. So, distance, uh, for the record, there, <coughs> distance is a scalar. It only has magnitude. It does not have direction. Okay, it's the total amount you travel. Total amount traveled. Okay, displacement is a little bit different. So first of all, displacement is a vector. It's got direction. And it's how far in a straight line, has to be a straight line, from A to B. Or you can think of it as start to finish, whatever is easier for you to think of. Okay, let me give you an example of this here. That's going to make your uh, head spin a little bit. I'm assuming most, if not all of you, woke up in your bed this morning. Okay. You got up, you did stuff, you came to school, you went to your classes and going to your classes. When you're done, you're going to go home to work, to practice, whatever. And then eventually you're going to end up back in your bed again, going to sleep. Assuming. What would your displacement, let's start with distance. Distance would be, you had a moment, right? How far are you? What would your displacement be? Zero, why? Bingo! You started and ended in the same spot. Because you started and ended in the same spot, your change, the difference, how far from A to B, is zero. There's no difference between it. You started and ended in the same spot. So that's a weird thing to think about, and that's what makes displacement strange. Because displacement is not just where, uh, how far did it go, it's where did I end up. I ended up in the back of the room. I ended up out in the hallway. I ended up back where I started. But it's always that. One last thing that might be helpful in thinking about displacement. Displacement is change. That's a word you're going to see in physics a lot. Physics is mostly about change. Okay. Change in velocity, change in position, change in time, change in force, change in mass. It's all about change, how those things change over time. Um, and so change is really important to what we're doing. 
So if you're wondering, like, why would we do anything other than distance? Why do I care about displacement? Because sometimes we need to know what the change is and where we ended up, and that matters. Okay? For example, if I said I drove 120 miles, where did I end up? I mean, who knows? Could have ended up anywhere. If I said I drove 120 miles north, where did I end up? Well, probably somewhere in the Lake Michigan area. Okay? You can tell based off of the information I gave you. That would be a displacement, not a distance. One last thing to mention, too. It doesn't matter what you do um, motion-wise. So if I start here and I go like that, that would be my distance, but my displacement would be this. Again, because it's change. I change between those two positions. So that's all I care about. I don't care about the whole thing. I just care about what the change is. Okay? Any questions on there before we go to the back? All right, we're doing good, guys. All right, uh, number eight, I already gave you an example, but there are several others. You can cross out nine, it's the same question. Anyone think of a different scenario where you could have a displacement of zero, but not a distance of zero? What's something else you might be able to do? Know what's something else I could do that would give me a displacement of zero, but not a distance of zero? Go to the store, come back home? Anyone else got anything else? That's a good one. Okay, go to the store, come back. Um, other classes that say get on the bus, take it to work, come back, get off at the same bus stop, that works. Um, running around a track, if you start in the inside lane, run all the way around the uh, inside lane, it's a 400 meter track, but the displacement would be zero. Um, that's always a fun one because if technically, <coughs> if someone asked you how far did you run, you technically could say zero meters. And you'd be right. So, next time your coach asks you how far you ran, you just tell them zero meters and see how they feel about it. Um, so that there's lots of examples for eight. Um, why can your displacement be negative but your distance cannot? It's because displacement has direction from A to B. I care about where I started and where I ended. Okay, so again, if I travel along some loopy thing, I care about where did I start, where did I end. So it's got a direction for it. So let's look at an example. I'll have you try a problem, and we'll be done. <coughs> All right. Larry lives in Lebanon. He's going to visit Adrian in Indianapolis. He gets on I-65 and drives 25 kilometers north uh, before he realizes he's going in the wrong direction, turns around and drives uh, 63,000 meters south. What direction and his distance and displacement. Now, first thing I want you to notice, you'll notice I bolded 25 kilometers. I'm always going to do that if you have to convert things. Um, You'll see conversions in random problems early on here, just to kind of give you practice with it. You'll see it more on labs where you have to convert things, so just be careful. So I see this, and I'm instantly thinking, okay, um, I need to change that into meters. So kilo is 10 to the third, base is 10 to the zero, three minus zero is 10 to the three, so I add three zeros to the end and move the decimal three spots and I get 25,000 meters. So I just do that before anything else. So here's the steps for solving. Step one, you're going to draw a diagram. Yes, I'm making you draw diagrams for all the problems. Um, the reason is I want you to get in a good habit of doing it because you're going to really need them later on. We're going to get to problems that are really complex, and you need to have diagrams to figure them out, or it's not going to make sense, and you're going to make easy mistakes. Um, so you need to have some sort of 
uh, diagram. I'll show you how to do it for this one here. So I start here in Indianapolis. Here's my Indianapolis. I'm going to call it A. I go forward or north uh, 25,000 meters. But then I realize I went the wrong way, turn around and go the opposite direction, uh, 63,000 meters. That's all you have to do for the diagram. It's not need to be complicated. They will get more complicated, but for right now they're not. Step two, you need to list the knowns and unknowns. You need to list what you know and what you're solving for and what you don't know and you're trying to, uh, as I mentioned, solve for. Okay, so I listed my first displacement. I just called it D1. I'm going to list my second displacement, D2, which is 63,000. And then I'm solving for the distance, God bless you. And I'm solving for the displacement. By the way, I'll frequently write just the symbol D. I always mean displacement. If I ever write D, I always mean displacement. I never mean distance. I'll write out distance or at least abbreviate it if it's distance. All right. Third step. See, so far, so easy. Uh, third step is set up the equation. Now there's not a set, e uh, set equation for these problems. There's not a set equation for these problems. So all you got to do is show me how you would go about doing it. Um, so for distance you just add everything up. So that would be uh, 25,000 and 63,000. Displacement, you add them up also, but with displacement, direction matters. So I go forward 25,000, but then I go backwards. Went backwards 63. So that's why I made it a negative. Now, people ask me all the time, it should be, what if I subtracted instead of adding a negative? Totally fine. Totally fine. No points off. No issues with that on my end. You'll get the same answer. Doesn't matter. Uh, fourth step is to solve. Um, show as much work as you can. Some problems is easier to show work than others. For example, this one you can't really show much work for because you're just adding numbers together. And the last one is to give me an answer with the unit. Okay? So when I add these up, 25,000 plus 63,000 is 88,000. And 25,000 plus a negative 63,000, or subtracting, gives you negative... 38,000. And yes, the negative needs to be there to get the full points. There you go. Okay, you got a few minutes here. Do number 12 real quick. Draw a quick diagram. Write what you're solving for. Set up on how to solve it. Give me an answer. Uh, just do that one real quick. See if you can knock out 12. Should not take you very long. Just a couple of minutes or so. See if you can figure it out. 